Right, so next uh, on stage we have a gentleman who started a, a creative and innovative platform called ICA. Uh, we're glad to know them from day one when we started Crowdsourcing Week. Great supporters, uh, also headquartered in Paris, but also based in Singapore, so we got to work very closely with them in many different, um, different initiatives. Um, and it's really important to see that, you know, uh, what Manuel said, like this collaborative economy has this monetization, that does not necessarily mean that has to be monetized. As a matter of fact, there are crowd companies out there who are not monetized at all, and it's uh, are like much bigger than the monetized platform. So if we think about, for example, Airbnb, there are many other Airbnbs who are not monetized by peer, but it's monetized the other way around. But in a way, you have to give something to get something, right? So if you're not okay to give that data, then you have to pay for it, right? So this is, what, this is how it works. Anyway, so I'd like to take on stage uh, Francois. Francois, uh, welcome. Great to see you. Give me a hug. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome to uh, Geneva. Yeah, and, let's be here. Uh, I'm really looking forward. You got also a report that you guys have gathered uh, in, re in regards to the crowd creativity. And we're looking forward to hear that. Thank you very much. Yes, we're. Um, uh, so today, where I'm going to share you basically the, the vision and observation how the lar world's largest brands are embracing crowdsourcing, this new approach. And we're talking very much about the PNGs and the Unilevers of this world, the Coca Colas. Um, and so the work I'm going to present to you today is actually an industry report where we kind of scrape the world. Uh, the web and the crowdsourcing uh, platforms out there to see how these people are embracing this new technology and this new disruptive way of doing things. Awesome. Francois, stage is yours. Thank you Welcome. very much. Thank Good you. seeing you. Yeah. So just before you start, uh, and also so that you understand why we're so interested into that field. So um, at ICA, so we are a crowdsourcing platform. And our, our, uh, our vision is very much that good ideas can come from anywhere. And so uh, we've assembled this crowd of 300,000 highly creative people. We call them creative consumers. And we uh, leverage that community to help brands invent their next generation of products, uh, develop new advertising or communication campaigns, and even develop content for the internet. So we've uh, been in that field uh, pretty early on, actually in 206, and we've been observer of that. So um, another thing happened in 2006, and this was the, the birth of uh, the crowdsourcing uh, word, and this actually emerged uh, by a writer uh, whose name is Jeff Howe, and he wrote this visionary piece in Wired where he said the future of outsourcing is going to the crowd, and he was uh, mentioning in that article basically the, the vision of big companies and smaller companies moving to the crowd to uh, take tasks that they were performing uh, usually internally and taking those tasks and bringing them to the crowd. Taking the examples, for example, of incentive, crowdsourcing, uh, scientific innovation, or taking Amazon mechanical truck, for example, for microtasking. And so uh, Jeff very much invented the term and actually were exchanging uh, recently and he was saying that he was amazed by how big this idea had become. And actually today uh, in this conference, uh, we're so back. Um, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes. So today now we have actually a conference uh, just dedicated on crowdsourcing. So that shows how far uh, this has gone. So um, obviously at ICA we're passionate about crowdsourcing and uh, at some point we also wanted to, to look at are we drinking our own cool, cool aid in some sense and is it, is it very much a big trend and how are these brands embracing the, the crowd as far as going into inventing their brands going forward and sourcing creative. So what we've done uh, was pretty much taking um, the world's largest brand, so the interbrand ranking of these top 100 brands out there, and look at their activity online. And so my colleague Yannig, who is right there, uh, has been performing uh, that, uh, that huge size for years now, scraping the world uh, web and looking at the projects and also creating a taxonomy of this project, basically what are the types of projects these people are uh, doing. And what we've done also is that we've been uh, looking at, with a bit more focus about the big uh, FMCG companies who uh, you will see are very heavy users of that technology. 
So when you go to these uh, big brands, and so this is the, basically how we assemble the, the research, a lot of these projects of these big brands are visible and are branded. So um, it's quite easy, actually, if you know where to, to look, uh, to find the project. And so we've assembled this timeline. And what you see, typically, each one of these um, of, uh, uh, tabs is a project uh, with a specific taxonomy. So it could be a design project, uh, application, video. And you'll see there's a lot of video out there. And what you see on the timeline is basically the frequency on the project. And what you can see is along with time, you have more and more projects coming in. And actually, uh, uh, this is accelerating pretty much right now. So, what's happened in the market since um, the first crowdsourcing, which happened uh, actually before the term was invented? If you look at those top 100 brands, uh, as of today, 85% of them have already conducted uh, crowdsourcing activity. So this has become uh, pretty much a widespread activity, and we're talking about very large brands out there. Um, and so this has become basically the, the new normal. Uh, if I can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so, uh, so very much widespread phenomenon. If, so let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so if you look at the industry, so you zoom into the industries and who's crowdsourcing, uh, this is quite an interesting trend because what you can see is that um, you have various levels of ad adoption. Historically, the technology sector, the blue line here, has been one of the first users, and we're, we're uh, talking about the Nokias of this world. Um, and this was very much because also the DNA is very much into the technology, and so embracing this kind of new approach uh, was natural. It's probably also because those people, people are very engaged into their technology products, uh, so obviously they want to contribute ideas and participate in those brands. Um, uh, but the category which was maybe a slow starter but now has very much explosed is the FMCG and that's the orange line. FMCG being the food and, and beverage and all these brands and those guys have very much taken over the category and we'll go and see why uh, this happened. Uh, so, but, um, so. so when you look at the FMCG pretty much what we've done is that we've looked at uh, the top 10 largest FMCG brands uh, and companies around the world, uh, which you can see here. And we looked at also the platforms on which they are the most frequently uh, crowdsourcing uh, ideas and content. Um, and we zoomed into that. And what we, what we found is that, so previous slide please, uh, what we found in the last year, so just in the last year, the activity of these players increased by uh, almost 50% year over year in the way they're adopting uh, crowdsourcing on these platforms. Um, and when you look at who's driving that, um, this is historically being driven by the Coca-Colas and the Pepsis of this world um, competing uh, against who's going to be the first one and the, the, the biggest crowdsourcing. But people like Danone uh, also have been very present, Samsung in technology. Um, uh, you'll find some uh, industrial people like General Electric uh, being there and using that more for reconnecting with a wider ecosystem, not just being uh, uh, technology centric. And Nokia has been historically a pretty big crowdsourcer. Um, but you see a lot of new people coming into the game. So if we go into the next slide, um, this is how the, the biggest uh, uh, FMCG brands are crowdsourcing and their evolution uh, in the last two years. Um, interestingly, you see so Procter & Gamble uh, sitting at the top, which is not a surprise because PNG was kind of a pioneer of open innovation. They created Connect and Develop uh, um, more than 10 years ago. And so obviously they, are, they have a DNA that is very consistent with crowdsourcing. Um, Unilever has been publicly a, a very a big advocate of crowdsourcing. Actually, they have, connect, they have created a program that is called the Foundry, where they uh, declare an interest to connect with the ecosystem of startups and with the ecosystem of uh, I would say entrepreneurs as a whole and ideators as a whole. Um, and their CMO uh, and CEO have been very uh, big promoters of that, and you can see that it's reflected in the, in the growth they've seen. Um, Nestle also has been uh, a very uh, 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 big adopter of crowdsourcing in the last year. And PepsiCo actually is, uh, you'll see, has been one of the pioneers of the field. They invented the Crash, the Doritos competition. If you know Crash the Super Bowl, raise your hand. 
Okay, so some of you will have some fun uh, discovering that. So Mexico started there. So yeah, so this is the way those people are embracing crowdsourcing. Interestingly, um, uh, the, the rise of FMCGs, you can interpret that about serious marketers and very pragmatic marketers uh, understanding the potential and the array of crowdsourcing not as I'll say um, a gimmick, but very much as a way of driving better results. And we will go into the array of his activity. Um, so moving to the next slide, Welcome now we're going folks. to- Just go ahead and take any empty seat. Oh, you're good, you can pay it. No, previous one. <laughs> yeah, let's play it. Welcome aboard folks. Just go ahead and take any empty seat that you see. Oh, I hope it's not contagious. I do have it. When your mom wakes up, can you tell her about me? <laughs> so, um, this is a video, so this is uh, one of the outcomes of uh, the Crash the Super Bowl competition. This is something that PepsiCo has been running and Dor uh, with Doritos have, have been running that since 2007, so very much pioneers in the field. Uh, and every year they run this huge competition. I think this year they got like almost 10,000 movies uploaded to the platform and get people to vote. And the most voted videos, actually the best videos, get aired during the Super Bowl and the winner gets a one million dollar cash prize, uh, and the winner of this year uh, is someone who was uh, from Chicago originally, and he, he spent $2,000 developing that ad, uh, and he won the competition. And interestingly, so uh, not only uh, this content is, is great, actually, what, what they found out when they, they because every year there's a, a meter of what are the ads that people have preferred in the, in the, in the Super Bowl, and very consistently, the uh, Doritos ads have been winning that meter or being scaring, uh, scoring very high, which, which shows that basically the crowd in itself has a way of providing relevance to the brand and finding something that resonates with people. So uh, very interesting impact. Uh, this type of usage, we, we call that video crowdsourcing, is very much about going to the crowd to, to find content. Uh, can go um, mostly for digital, but can be for TV, like this one. And you'll see it's been the most widespread usage of crowdsourcing historically. Um, a second usage is for innovation, and so we're going to watch a case study with PNG on inventing new products uh, based on that. So if we can go to the next slide. We are going to launch the world's first Bluetooth-connected rechargeable brush from start to finish in 18 months. We knew consumers were interested in improving their oral health and gaining more control of their oral health on a day-to-day -day basis. We had no resources, we had no money, and we had no best approach. Uh, we knew time was critical, and the first mover advantage in this space would be the person you know, who, could, who could launch the first, the first product. So the community helped us to anticipate many of the issues and questions that we, that we then faced and helped us work through already some of the, some of the problems that we, that we came up with. The quality and number of responses from the ICA community was extremely high. We, we were very pleased internally. They gave us a huge head start and it really helped us to gain a lot of time and anticipate some of the problems that we then, in the, in the development of the product, in particular, the importance of content, the importance of gamification, the importance of the family uh, interactivity, socialization. These were all elements that we hadn't thought about, we hadn't anticipated. The community helped us to work those through. The highlights of the, of the submissions were the quality of the thinking, and I think that would never have been possible without working with Yeka and the community. We have launched the world's first Bluetooth connected uh, rechargeable brush. Uh, we're shipping already in, in many different markets. Uh, and the response from retailers, from the profession and from consumers has been exceptionally good. So 
in this case, what the brand is looking for is not finished work, it's actually customer and consumer co-creation in some sense. So by bringing a network of people coming up with crazy ideas or new ideas, basically it helps you find trends or have a vision of a future where people want the brand or want the innovation to go into, and sometimes you can find gems. So for example, one of the ideas that PNG got actually came from China, so we're talking about really much worldwide ideation, and this was the idea of, uh, uh, in, the, in the spirit of gamification, an app invented by a Chinese girl where uh, it's like Guitar Hero for your toothbrush, so if, and it's very much for your kids, so if they watch like this, like my kids, or they just stay on the same tooth for like two minutes, uh, the music doesn't play or play berserk, and if you do it nicely, then the music plays nice. So that's the kind of gems that you can get along with uh, the collective intelligence that emerged from the crowd, and this is very much the strategic value here, is very much about getting it right from the start. As a brand, as a company, very often you can think, okay, we are experts and we know everything, but at some point, I mean, how does that resonate with real people? So by doing it with them, actually, you can come up with better ideas. Um, and then we have other modes of crowdsourcing, so this is the idea crowdsourcing, uh, then if you go to the next slide, uh, this is packaging, so this is more about finding people who can come up with breakthrough ideas into a, a field, or even this can be al almost arbitrage, so uh, this is a project with a, a brand who was a leader in coffee, instant coffee in Serbia, and Eastern Europe, uh, Strauss Coffee, and they really wanted to refresh the packaging and stand on the shelves, and they're kind of stuck, so what they did is that they crowdsourced packaging designs, uh, received hundreds of them, and so what we did after creation, this this concept you see here um, was the, the most relevant to them and performed very well on test. So actually they brought it to market and they transformed it. And interestingly, the best idea came from California, uh, with someone that doesn't at all know their market, but had this very interesting idea of how do you uh, talk about a, a scent and taste across a line of products. Uh, that person, so if we go to the next slide, actually is a pretty interesting example. She was um, featured uh, in, uh, in uh, Ali, um, Ali McAllister, actually she's been featured in the local uh, newspaper. And interestingly, she shows the, the why those people are participating in crowdsourcing. And this is very much about what we call the four Fs. And the four Fs will be uh, fun, uh, I like creating, so this person is waking up in the morning and she opens her computer and she goes to crowdsourcing platforms to find new projects and she shows us the, the projects that she has interest into. Uh, this can be about fame, uh, as you can see she's in the newspaper. Uh, this can be about finance because uh, usually crowdsourcing competitions are the financial uh, um, compensation for the winners and uh, she has actually uh, uh, is making most of her money now uh, be before she was an agency expert um, professional and now she's working from home and she doesn't commute so she likes and she works she changes clients every day she has a great time um, and this is very much about fulfillment uh, which is the fourth F and this is very much like when I am creative I really strive for that so every day is fantastic if I can bring the best of uh, my skills to the world and crowdsourcing is a fantastic way of doing that. So um, very self-motivated people um, involved in those crowdsourcing projects. Um, next slide. Uh, this is a more minor uh, way of uh, crowdsourcing for brands, which is about casting and personal stories. And this was a campaign done by McDonald's, where people could submit stories and their stories with McDonald's. And um, uh, 40 of these people actually ended up on the packagings and, uh, and, and faced millions of people across the world. So we're really looking for uh, talent or looking for individuals who express themselves. Uh, next slide is all, um, uh, probably um, one of the last ones, is about applications. So, um, for example, if you look at cars, now cars are becoming platforms. What kind of applications can you create and what a better tool that actually going to the crowd and saying, what is your idea, what kind of apps could we build into the car to make the car a better experience uh, with Ford. And finally, uh, music, and this is a jingle crowdsourced by Nokia to kind of refresh the, um, the jingle. So 
here it's also about freshness because as a brand, very often you are into your brand so much that you don't see anything anymore. And so the fact that you open up, you can, you can find your jingle cool again, even if maybe you were uh, uh, too much with it already. So um, now if we go to kind of a landscape of these uh, of these projects uh, in the next slide, um, you can see that. Uh, and let's let's go to the next slide. Yeah, uh, directly. Uh, yeah, two slide more. Yeah. Human, this is crowd powered uh, slide movement. Uh, next one, sorry. Yeah. So, what you see is that the most often and the most frequent in the last 10 years uh, crowdsourcing uh, format is very much about video. So, the types of Doritos uh, that I shared, uh, followed by the IDs, and the rest is a bit more minor uh, in terms of uh, you, you find some design that after that is pretty much minor. Uh, interestingly, this is evolving pretty fast. Um, so, going to the next slide. Uh, what you see is that the share of the IDs, competitions, which is the green, uh, among the big brands, um, actually has been very much exploding. And you see a migration from brands who pretty much start by crowdsourcing videos, because this is kind of a natural, and you have all these producers now on the web. And so this is a natural way of going to the, to the public and saying, why don't you actually engage with us and create content with us? By doing that, those brands are realizing that there are actually IDs, and then when they got all these uh, uh, new ways of talking about the brand, maybe there's also uh, actually strategic IDs that they could leverage into their brand, pretty much like what you saw with PNG about inventing the, the, the toothbrush of the future. So um, yeah, all these brands are pretty much entering through kind of a Production mindset is like, let's go to the crowd and get them to create something directly to us to actually migrate to an ideation where it's more like, okay, what are they really telling us? What is the collective intelligence and the gems they're giving to us? And let's, build, let's take our expertise and develop new products and campaigns based on those insights and this creative that the crowd is bringing to us. So, um, the last thing is pretty much where are the brands looking for creativity? And um, if you had been looking at the market uh, uh, eight years ago, you'll have found a lot of competitions. That's the right one. On uh, websites, so brands doing their own website or uh, running competition on Facebook, on YouTube. And what experience has shown is that the uh, um, crowdsourcing platforms are much more efficient to do that. So crowdsourcing platforms being platforms where you have already a pre-assembled uh, community. Uh, that is already motivated into doing co-creation and crowdsourcing and actually where you can be pretty much people who are available and willing to participate. And this, I mean, you can explain that very much about what I call the 1990 rule, uh, which is pretty much that 1% uh, of the people in the population will be uh, willing and able to create something. 9% will kind of validate and those people will be on social media. And the 90% of the rest will be more the consumers. Um, so, um, going, to, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Uh, if you look at those platforms, pretty much it's very lot of people uh, playing uh, right now in that market. Uh, what you can see is that still it's pretty much concentrated across four to five players who are pretty much the, the ones that do the most projects uh, with the brand. So, um, a pretty dynamic market in there, and also driven by the fact a lot of brands are getting interest into this format. So. Um, just to finish, and very much to the array of crowdsourcing, um, what, what we found out looking at all these categories and themes is that it really much boils down to uh, three big drivers of why those brands are going to, uh, those crowds for ideation and creativity. First is very much the freshness. It's, I'm a marketer, I sit in my office somewhere in the world, and actually I want to connect with consumers who are everywhere, and how do I, I make sure that I'm relevant to them and that my campaigns or my products are going to resonate? And what a better way actually to connect with them and ask them for their ideas about creating and co-creating uh, with them. So that's about the freshness. Uh, and this is very much, for example, what PNG has been doing. Um, the second thing is very much the speed, because most of the, of the initiatives you saw are things that number in a matter of days or weeks compared to traditional process or months. And so you see a time acceleration. It's like you do a massively parallel creativity instead of doing sequential. So that's the second uh, biggest benefit. Uh, and we know that time is money. And the, and the last one is effectiveness. So this is not that much about cutting costs because those companies have, a, have big budgets. This is much more about 
when you develop something and then you test it and it doesn't work and then you have to redevelop and then test again and it doesn't work, lose a lot of time, maybe you won't be the first to market and, or you lose the market altogether or you learn something that is not working. So crowdsourcing by putting all the ideas on the table that, that helps them basically get it right from the start and that's probably the, the biggest uh, benefit. So, thank you. Francois, yeah. thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, can we turn on the microphone? Okay. Can we do two questions yep. and then we're going to go for a coffee break uh, and then I'll, I'll invite Guy on the stage. Uh, question. Anyone? Okay, here. Hello, I'm Christine Pion from SPD. I have a question on confidentiality yes. because I guess you give them a brief and then you get the result. So. The brief goes to a crowd as per definition, and how do you ensure confidentiality? Yes, yeah, so, so this is a big and very disruptive change for brands because brands have been used to brief like a very limited set of people in a room, I will say. Um, so every brief that goes on, on the platforms is public. And so nothing that you see on these platforms actually uh, uh, is deemed confidential. The answers from the crowd are usually stay within a, a black box, so brands. Only the brand will see the results, not the community itself. So you get the confidentiality of answers. And some of the briefs actually are unbranded. So for example, uh, if you'd been on ICA back in 2012 and we ran the PNG or OB brief, you'll have found a, a major or leading brand is running and wants their idea about what happens when you connect your smartphone to your toothbrush. But uh, actually, the toothbrush, I think we had put a Colgate toothbrush uh, or if without the brand, but you, we had like played with a code so that no one could really trace back to PNG. And after that, they said this was PNG running the competition. So, a uh, great question, and definitely, this is by design. You have to manage the confidentiality in the way you ask the question to a crowd. Great. Uh, one more? Do we have? All right. Francois, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.